So this is what we're going to go over today, um, everything from how the PCM or the ECM controls the idle um, through the basics, everything like that. Um, quick note, VE calibration or MAP calibration, we're not going to go over that because uh, there's other videos to cover how to do that and I don't want to really get make this video longer than it has to be, so we're just going to say that it needs to be done, that's about it. Uh, but yeah, we'll cover all this stuff uh, in the video coming up here and I uh, hope you like it. Alright, so how the PCM ECM controls the idle, um, it's actually pretty simple. Uh, we're going to actually set a target RPM. And then the uh, computer is going to use the fueling uh, numbers it knows, the air, airflow calibration, to try to maintain a base RPM setting um, based on what we set. Uh, the rest of these tables are going to come into effect, but the main ones are going to be our fuel, our spark, and our uh, obviously our RPM setting itself, and of course our uh, airflow. So fuel, spark, and air. So keep that in mind. Um, the ones that are going to have the most effect uh, that take less time to um, occur is going to be your spark and your fuel. Uh, then, then it's going to be airflow last. It's going to actually more affect the range. So think of about airflow like a range and the spark as the actual uh, instrument to actually fine tune and control the idle. Um, that's pretty much it. So that's how it works. Uh, this is all the tables that are going to be affected. Uh, so we'll go through these uh, one at a time. Okay, so the basics. Um, first off, note that um, with very large cams, speed density may be required uh, because trims are really going to mess with a really large cam. You'll find that that's very difficult to get the, any type of adders um, to play nice with a big cam. So basically this is the order we do it. Uh, pretty much increase our idle RPM, we increase the airflow, uh, we get the fueling right, come back and adjust the RAF uh, to get the numbers right. Um, then we go ahead and adjust the IC counts down, uh, get them in a range we need. And then, uh, of course, uh, just spark is needed. Um, if you need more or less, uh, depending on which engine is doing, hanging or undershooting, um, and then you go ahead and do that. And then that's going to be when you start messing around with uh, trying to get it to return to idle. And then, of course, uh, they move into fine tuning and then uh, cold start tuning. That's one of the last things you're going to do or try for. Um, but uh, note at the bottom, it may be necessary in some uh, to drill, port out the IC motor or drill hole in the blade. Now, uh, don't just do this right off the bat, uh, and don't assume you need to do this, because a lot of this can be corrected in the tune, so try the tune first, because uh, this can't be undone, so, um, unless you buy a new one. So, definitely uh, try to get it done in the tune first uh, before you go drilling holes. Uh, so, uh, we'll move into the rest of it here in a sec. Uh, get right into the setup, and how we uh, basically go through and kind of set this up. Okay, so first thing I'm going to mention, I'm not going to show how to do this with a map. I'm just going to show you how to do it under speed density because it's so much easier to do this in speed density. Taking all the trims out and everything else. Um, so basically, I'm not going to mention the math because um, that really makes things difficult with a large camp. So what we're going to go do first thing is go to engine. Um, we're going to go to general. This is a stock tune, so we'll go to idle. Um, we're going to go to the base set point. We're going to increase this by 150. Uh, and this is going to be cam dependent, so this could be higher, it could be lower. We're just going to add 150 across the board. That should work fine. Um, and should even warm up a little bit easier. It's fine. Um, it'll be okay. We can come back, reduce all these numbers later, play with all these numbers later. But for now, that should work. Um, just to get us somewhere where we can start to get this thing tuned. So now we're going to move over to airflow, and uh, then we go to base running airflow. Same thing. We go to here. Again, this looks like a lot of guesswork, but it's really not. Uh, it's just to get the car to start. We're going to add six grams a second across the board, pretty much effectively doubling the table. Just add six grams. Then from 111 back over to the 40, we're going to hit interpolate between horizontal bounds. Click on this. Now we get this. Uh, so this is pretty much going to cover enough air just to uh, get us started. And th this table dictates what this table is uh, basically where it starts and what these numbers mean. So whatever this table says is going to affect this table. So that's going to be something to, to note later on when, we, when if you make adjustments to this uh, later on um, using my other videos, um, then you're going to have to come back and adjust this too. Uh, anyway. In essence, that's pretty much uh, pretty much a, a starting point. So we'll just talk about airflow real quick. The main VE. Um, if you have issues with uh, too much fuel surging, reduce fuel in these cells here. Um, go by 10% at a time, something like that. Pull the fuel out, and then uh, rinse, repeat until you can get it to a point where it's stable enough to tune it. So once you have it stable enough to tune it, um, you can follow my other guides like uh, tuning the VE, tune it that way. And uh, once you get it close, um, then you can go back and tune everything else. So everything's going to depend on how good this table is tuned. So once you get the car started, this first thing you're going to tune is right here. Tune the VE, and then uh, once you get that good, uh, get the fueling right, then you're going to move on to the other tables. But for now, that's what we're going to worry about. Um, that's pretty much it for a setup. You can leave this alone. 
until you get it started and uh, kind of figure it out. But the math, again, you should be in speed density. Try to avoid using the math um, because it's just so inaccurate at idle. Also, um, if you have the trims on, uh, large overlap is going to create false lean conditions, going to create lots of issues for you. So you're going to find that's very hard to tune. So uh, again, speed density setup, tune it in, tune the VE. And then that's pretty much it. We'll move on to uh, tuning the RAF here in a second. All right, so now I have an old log pulled up here. Um, what we're going to do now is go ahead and plug in numbers for our RAF table. Um, let's go ahead and assume we've already adjusted our VE and we got that good to go. And as uh, we see here, this VE table is actually very, very good um, as far as very close to uh, to zero on the error. It's particularly in the idle cell that it, uh, the car likes to stay here at uh, 800 at 65. Especially if we look at the counts, it's 14,000 counts and we're at zero. So very good number to use um, as far as uh, dynamic here. Uh, so what we're going to do is plot dynamic along ECT. Uh, so what, what's going to look like, we need to build the chart for that. We need to plot dynamic error to tell the engine what it needed um, to turn, basically tell it what the desired should be. Um, so we'll use dynamic for that number, plot that along our ECT axis, and uh, that's going to become our new RAF table. So let's go ahead and build a chart. Let's build a graph for that. So I'll um, show you how to do that. So first off, we need to add a table. So we're going to go ahead and add the table. So we have new table. Um, we're going to plot dynamic, dynamic airflow, and then of course uh, it's going to be in grams per second. So we're leave two decimals is fine for the filtering. Now this um, this is optional. However, um, I would recommend putting in a throttle filter here in case you have to help it a little bit and you don't mess up your numbers. Uh, so what we're going to add here is throttle position. Throttle position ratio, and hit the generic is fine. Set that to percent. Hit OK. We're going to go ahead and make that less than 0.5. And that's not less than, I got the shift key apparently. Uh, there we go. And now it's less than 0.5%. And um, then we'll go ahead and set the cell hits to 50. And then now we need our column axis. And uh, so we'll go back to the table, take a look at that. Go to engine. That's going to be under idle. And then uh, over on airflow, we have our uh, base running airflow. So our raft table, o open idle airflow. And uh, we see the uh, degrees Fahrenheit along the top. So we have our uh, ECT. So we're going to go ahead and get these labels. We need column axis, copy labels. Click that. Go back to our scanner. And go ahead and enter that down here as ECT, engine coolant. The generic spine again. And we'll go ahead and uh, set that to Fahrenheit. And then paste in our, uh, our labels here. Now we have um, numbers and we have dynamic airflow and then we name this the RAF correction and that should be good to go. So now, now we have a table that will tell us and plot dynamic airflow along different temperatures uh, that the engine was at at 0% throttle. So the reason we use 0 0.5 uh, on the filter is because a lot of times at 0 it will re register a 0.4 for some reason. Now again, for this to work, you're going to have to make sure you're also logging it over here. Uh, so you have your uh, engine coolant temp, and there it is there. And then if you look down here, we have dynamic airflow being logged. So both those numbers are being logged, and we have numbers populated here. So what we do with these numbers, we go ahead and copy them. Starting at the 25, we'll go ahead and just copy. And we'll take it over to the table, and starting at 25, and we're going to say this is in park. This can be done in gear as well, of course. Um, so we paste not paste special, we're just going to paste straight over. Paste those numbers straight in from 25 over. And now we have a nice big blip here, as you see um, the actual airflow that occurred um, while the engine was warming up. <coughs> this can be redone as many times as you like, um, as you, if you make changes to VE or anything else, you can redo this. Um, now the rest of the, we, we're going to want to smooth out the ends. So what we're going to go ahead and do is uh, go to the end here, I'm going to just go ahead and say this is 30. And that'd be a pretty good guesstimate. Uh, get about another four grams a second there. Then I'm going to interpolate these uh, between each other. So I'm just hit interpolate. Get that uh, from 30 down to 20, 26, uh, which was was uh, the 25 value. And then at the end, uh, same thing. I'm going to do something like that. I'm going to move this up to say 15. And then I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to select and I'm going to interpolate that to bring that value up as well. Now. Um, Again, you can repeat this in gear and uh, get the numbers and plug them back in here. Um, but if you want to go ahead 
and get something you can use to get that a little easier to easier to uh, to tune because um, you might have find the car will die if you leave the numbers alone. Um, go ahead and uh, just copy the row up, and then what I like to do is just go ahead and just add about one gram a second to the top row, and uh, that should should cover it. Now, again, like I said, you can go back and tune this in gear. Uh, just start the car, put it in gear, and hold the hold the brake and let it warm up, and um, you'll get get values in here as well, and then you can plug those in. They may be uh, different than the bottom. Um, again, repeat this table as many times as necessary um, with every other change you make. If you make changes to your IEC, you're gonna have to come back here. If you make changes to your VE table, you're gonna have to come back here, um, so on and so forth. You get the idea. Um, and then of course, if the uh, it's different conditions that day, or you make any other changes to the throttle uh, body screw or anything like that, um, again, you're gonna wanna come back. This is a good, good base running number. Um, and again, uh, not a bad idea to repeat it later um, a few times to confirm. And then uh, that's pretty much it for adjusting the base running airflow. Um, so now we'll move on uh, to the next thing. A few quick notes on adjusting the throttle blade. All right, so opening the blade is gonna decrease the IC counts because you're gonna allow more air around the blade. So the IC doesn't have to be as open as much to let the appropriate amount of air in. Um, and also, conversely, of course, closing it will increase them. So keep the target right around 40 to 60 counts. Make sure you're logging this uh, anytime you're doing idle tuning. And um, warm, at warm idle, you should see that number or in that range uh, at about 160 to 200 degrees. Um, when making the adjustments done, obviously as well, uh, the other thing is uh, make sure you're tracking your TPS voltage and don't go over 0.7 volts. Um, above this number, um, you're going to get out of the idle routine and um, basically it won't go into idle, uh, which is uh, not a good thing. So if you have to open it farther than that, you might have to, there might be something else you have to do. Um, could be tune related and it might also just be airflow related, um, not enough air coming in. Uh, so in that case, sometimes drilling an eighth inch hole is necessary and or porting, the, uh, porting out the IEC port. Not gonna say do that right off the bat. Definitely chase it down, try to figure it out in the tune first. Uh, again, um, that's not something you can just redo. Um, also for your setup, uh, your RPM setting, that's another thing. So if you can't get the RPM down, it's probably just getting unstable and it just can't idle there at that RPM that you're setting it at. It just sometimes, it just cannot do it. And um, you'll notice that it's actually fine tuning could be off 20 RPM low and it'll just close the IC until it closes completely off and uh, you'll just the engine will lose control over the airflow. Uh, so that's something to keep an eye on. So if you're seeing that the average is above your setting, then then that's probably your issue. So you can bump the RPM up just a little bit, maybe 25, and uh, that should correct that. Uh, drilling a hole, again, is not reversible. So make sure you try to fix it in the tune every time and uh, before you make any type of mechanical changes. But that's pretty much it for the adjusting the blade. It's pretty simple. Uh, I'll show you a couple examples of what the ports look like on the IC motors to give you an idea of uh, how that uh, how that how that works with the more or less airflow. All right, so here here's the example I was talking about. Uh, picture I pulled off of a forum quite a while ago, but uh, you can see um, you can see the old stock throttle body here in the IC port is uh, quite large, and then uh, on the new one here down here you got a fast one or two, and uh, you see the outlet for it is very very small significantly less than that uh, so that's something to keep in mind um, you may have to port this out um, and this is going to be for more along the uh, lines of a cold start to get it to behave nicely under colder conditions and other adverse conditions otherwise at warm idle this really won't affect it too much but at cold idle uh, when it's cold starts it definitely will uh, so it's just a note um, so you can see what I was talking about with drilling and or porting. Uh, you may need to do that. Um, that's up to you. But you can see here, um, I'm not exactly making a case not to do it uh, because you can see the difference in the sizes, um, which is quite massive um, when you look at the aftermarket versus the, uh, the old stock one. All right, so just a few more notes on idle fuel. So we should be pretty close if we got our MAF or VE calibration already set up. Um, again, MAF, uh, We'll talk about that in a little bit on uh, how the trims can mess with us here, um, especially with large cams. Uh, so in reality, they need less fuel. So large cams, they just don't seem to like a lot of fuel. They will surge pretty bad. So uh, that's something something to note, uh, just, just quick notes here. Um, I'm not gonna go through anything in the tables because uh, I'm not gonna insult you. We already went through the BE and you should know where the math is as well. Um, 
right next to it. Uh, so we'll go, we'll come back to this a little bit. Um, another video later on talk about math and some other things um, but anyway uh, too much fuel is going to cause surging definitely and if fueling is correct however um, surging at or bucking at low speeds like two or three thousand rpm it's going to be on your uh, it will definitely be on your high octane or, or low octane depending if you're doing speed density it's probably going to be on low octane um, that's going to be a spark issue uh, and usually because two, two to three k bucking um, is usually caused by spark um, two or three thousand rpm that is uh, so the last thing to talk about is false lean. So false lean is another consideration at low RPM. Um, air is going to escape due to overlap. Um, it's going to get into the exhaust, so it's going to cause the O2s to think that it's a little bit leaner than it really is. Uh, so that's that's just a fault, what we know known as a false lean. So um, we'll jump right into uh, how to correct this uh, in a little bit after we talk about spark. Okay, so for idle spark, it's pretty simple. So in essence, the general rule is more spark equals more torque. Uh, so, th of course, there's a limit to this, but in general, more spark is going to keep the engine running longer. Um, well, it's going to keep it running uh, or hanging longer. So, if you have a hanging issue, it's most definitely a spark issue. I almost guarantee you that. Um, so, 99% of the time, that's going to be the problem. Uh, base spark settings are, are always going to be quicker than the adaptives. Uh, so, if it's from a lookup table, it's what it's going to be in the first place and not what it has to adjust to. So think about it like that. So adjust these before you mess with adaptives or anything else. So if you have a hang problem, because um, we've already done the fuel and air and everything else, it seems pretty good. Um, then you're going to move with spark and correct any type of issues you got with hanging or undershoot. I'm um, going to show you how to uh, set all this stuff up in a second uh, and basically make those small corrections uh, here, in, here in the tune. All right, so let's talk about spark advance real quick. So first off, we're going to go to the engine and then come over to spark and click on that. Keep it under advance right here, spark advance. And then when we look at our base, initially I just want to point this out. High and low octane tables, your main spark tables here. Um, under, above them, uh, you'll notice uh, there's some numbers here. These are your selection numbers for use of these versus these. So over here on the right, you have your idle spark advance. Click on the in park. This is the one that's used in park when the uh, selector is in park for an automatic car. Uh, first thing I do to this table is I go ahead and add in a, what I like to call a little stall saver. So I throw in about 30 degrees and uh, just make that 30 degrees right there and so that that acts as a little stall saver then uh, on your 800 column this is where you're going to set up if you need more spark for a particular cam if it's not running well you can add in add in some spark here uh, go two or three degrees at a time until you get some uh, good results also you'd add spark to increase the uh, vacuum uh, aka reduce the map value so as the map comes down, uh, as you increase spark, you actually make it more torque, run a little more efficient, so that can help you uh, get a little bit cleaner idle as well. Um, but now let's uh, assume we're having a, let's say that we actually are having a problem uh, with a hang. So if I goose the throttle and I have a problem and it's hanging, and it seems to want to stick at 1200 RPM, and just wants to sit there, I'm gonna have to pull spark out. Let's say I have a, so I'm not, you know, these, this is a real log, uh, whereas the and this is not stock, uh, but if we look at the other one uh, just as a as a guesstimate, so we're going to go ahead and say we have to pull out. Uh, we're going to go ahead and pull out about three degrees. We'll do we go like two to three degrees at a time. You're going to be just fine. But you just look at the region in which it is uh, sticking. That's what you want to look at is actually where you're having the problem. So if it's a 1200, so we look at the column and it idles at say 36 you know, or around here, and like some natural idle area, and that's where you're having the problem, uh, then that's where you remove the, the spark. But I also like to carry it out to the edges just for a cleaner looking table and uh, to not confuse the PCM in case it does hit those areas and I don't have an issue later by hitting it. So what I do is I go ahead and just select the whole area a little bit above and a little bit below, and it's not gonna hurt me to go ahead and pull about three degrees out. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw in three degrees, or minus three, and I'm gonna hit add which will remove three degrees of spark so that's what happens I pull it out and uh, then now I, I shouldn't have an, a hanging problem and if I still do I just pull out a little bit more and I just you know I can take out two more degrees or I can go up a little bit above it and and uh, so on and so forth so that'll correct an, an idle hang or bring it back to idle faster by pulling a little bit of torque out and let the engine spool back down quicker so the more spark I pull the faster it's going to come back down comes back down too fast and and then wants to stall then that's when you're going to want to go ahead and add a little bit of spark back 
or add a little bit to your 800 column where it should be idling around this area and add a little bit more back into it but um, other than that that's pretty much uh, how that works once you're all done and you have everything where you like it and everything works nice and everything's running good um, you go ahead and copy this table this is a good way to do this and you just come on over to the drive table and you just paste it straight over once you have a good setup now on this table because it's drive I'm going to go ahead and add 3 degrees to it just across the board and uh, call it a day because this uh, um, this is a setting for drive so I want to make sure that I have enough torque um, while I'm going down the road and I don't have stalling when I'm coming down to the stoplight or something like that I don't want to have an issue with that so this is to account for the little bit extra uh, torque uh, applied to the engine so the, uh, the, the extra load from the gears um, while it's in gear so yeah so yeah that's pretty much it so you add about three degrees to that um, and uh, pretty much how we do this um, and that should be about it for sparks so next we'll talk about the adaptives and some other things and um, move on uh, with the tuning okay so hybrid tunes that we're talking about here is not talking about tune a Prius uh, and how much battery power to add or or subtract or however the hell that works um, no we're talking about actually a combination tune here so um, what we're talking about is a uh, with large very routed cams uh, may be necessary to run a hybrid um, what this means is all we're doing is we're going to go ahead and trick the uh, trick PCM into thinking it's speed density or that it's speed density basically at idle um, even though the math is active uh, so what we do to do that is uh, simply put it into a uh, power enrichment mode at idle um, which will basically disable um, any fuel trims that the math might be trying to correct for in closed loop so it'll essentially put the uh, car in an open loop idle uh, situation with no trims uh, which works very well um, to uh, to use the best of both worlds so you can use your math and your uh, and it, as well as a big huge cam and it'll both work uh, perfectly fine together I'll show you how to set this up in a second all right, so I thought throw this in there is how to make a hybrid tune. So um, just to cover this um, real quick. And it's only going to be if you're going to use the MAF and you have a really big cam and uh, it's having lots of problems with your fuel trims and you want to disable them. This is how you're going to do that. So you head over to this fuel tab and we're going to click on power enrichment. So power, power enrich. From here, all we're going to do is set our EQ ratio to 1.0 up through about 1600 RPM. That'd be just fine. So we set it to one right there. Then we do the same thing on the cold table for your throttle position. And we'll set this to zero. And that's it. So that's, that's all we're gonna do. Um, that's, that, that will literally disable all fuel trims in the idle area, math on or not. So that's, uh, that's pretty much it. Again, the only time you're going to do this is if you want to use the MAF, trims, closed loop, all that good stuff, and uh, and uh, also use it above, uh, you know, because clearly above this uh, number, it's going to actually uh, use the MAF, everything will be on. Um, but at idle, it won't mess with you. So it's actually kind of, kind of a neat little uh, trick. All right, last thing we're going to talk about is the adaptive. So all the air and the spark and everything else. Uh, so first off, we got to understand the PID. So what we're talking about is a uh, proportional, integral, and derivative. So the first one, proportional, is larger the error, the larger the correction. So that's pretty pretty clear. So the farther it's off, the more it's going to correct. So it's on a slope. Um, next one's going to be uh, integral. That's going to be added after the other two have already made adjustments. So it's going to be more of a long-term um, adjustment. So think long-term idle trims with this. And then you have the, this one, der derivative. This is your fast acting uh, rate based on rate of change or slope. So if it detects a rate of change of say 100 RPM per second, it's going to uh, calculate that as 100 RPM. Uh, it's going to make a change for that amount of change. Um, so it's gonna try to compensate quickly um, using air. And uh, so this one's also acts as a stall saver if stall saver is employed um, so if it enter enters those settings uh, derivative is going to be how it does that um, so it's going to be very quick uh, so this actually only takes about 0.6 seconds to activate uh, to make changes or before anything's even registered it's already already doing stuff for 0.6 seconds before it even registers in the scanner um, from what everything I've researched on this so it's very quick so it's your short-term idle terms is your derivative so now once proportional and derivative are done, that's when integral plugs in and does your long term. 
Um, so the last one is a spark adapt is, and of course it's under and overshoot, uh, undershoot and overshoot. Um, it is pretty straightforward. It's literally just the amount of spark it's going to pull and on a proportional um, scale. So basically uh, this is this is pretty much proportional setup. So if you want to go by the, this definition, that, that would fit this one the best. Uh, as in, it's off this many RPM pull this much, and that's pretty much how that works. Uh, so we'll take a look at all those tables real quick and uh, go over them and show them in the tune and uh, pretty much I should wrap up everything uh, as far as goes to idle tuning. I hope uh, all this was helpful. Okay, so the last thing I want to talk about is adaptive idle. So first we're going to go to the engine, come over to the idle tab, um, and you see right under RPM, we have our adaptive idle, and you're probably wondering why it's here um, and not under the airflow. Well, here's why. Um, the adaptive idle is going to be used to control the airflow in order to control the idle, um, to actually control the RPM. Uh, so that's what these are being used for. And as we just learned, we have a proportional, uh, integral, and derivative. So when you see startup PID delay, so how long many seconds it's going to take for the delay to, uh, for the PID to be active, with, uh, aka adaptive idle. So when we see that, um, now you know what those letters stand for. So if we go down underneath, um, we can actually see our stall saver and gear and park neutral by stock is usually disabled and you can pretty much leave it this way if you set up the spark table pro properly you don't really need it um, and underneath you have your proportional integral and derivative just as we discussed we have our this is based on amount of error so the larger the error the larger the correction so you see it's pretty much a slope there um, so based on straight up error so that makes it proportional so the correction is proportional to the amount of error so that's how that works. So you get low when you get high and you get in, in gear, um, in gear, AC on, AC off, etc. Uh, so that's how proportional works. So normally you can set this up a little, if you, if you want to, uh, if you're having a lot of swing, um, going along and your uh, IC is, is very unstable, um, try increasing the RPM enablers, um, a little bit, uh, and go from there and reducing the numbers slightly, um, can usually actually help that out, stabilize it a little bit more. Um, now you go down to integral. Um, this is a combination of the other two as a proportional derivative. This is a long term. And then you have your derivative, which is your very, very fast action, uh, fast acting corrections. These happen very quickly um, and they're based on rate. So if you open it, uh, you have your low and the rate of change on the top. So this is the rate of change. And then, of course, the uh, on the bottom, you have the actual correction. So once it starts to make a change, it's 0.05 and then goes up. Don't ask me what the top really represents, but I'm going to say that's probably RPM per millisecond or something along those lines or seconds of some kind, but this is a rate of change. So think of it like that. So um, I'm not real positive of what the value really represents, um, but just know that this is rate of change. That's what that is. Uh, so having the number, um, so once it gets to this, it's going to act very quickly and add two grams a second um, at that if it's changing this quickly. So this is gonna, this is almost as fast as Spark, but not quite. It's just not as fast as uh, actual Spark commands because that's, this requires a motor to operate open and close, whereas the Spark only requires a PCM to tell a different number on a wire. Um, it's moving a lot quicker uh, than the motor can. So that's just something to note. Uh, so that's how the derivative works. Um, so we go over to, the, and I'm gonna say how to adjust all this exactly. Usually um, when you have very quickly, uh, very quick acting IC and it's, and it's jumping around a lot, um, coming in here and reducing these a little bit is going to calm that down a little bit and uh, turn more of the corrections over to the spark, which is usually the best way to do it. Um, when you come over to airflow, um, you see here you got your adaptive airflow on the bottom. Uh, just one thing to note on this one, this is one of the settings that, that's pretty important. Um, if you do have a lot of issues and you have long-term idle trims, uh, and short-term model trim issues. Um, so you have your short terms, or basically this is the maximum memory value. You can read the bottom. It actually tells you exactly. So 2.0, it gets up. It can let's say the previous value is 3.44, and you left an idle situation, like you went into a transition, um, and then came back. Two would be the max that we could remember, and uh, would take time for it to relearn that uh, it has to get back up to the actual correction. So increasing this number if you have that, but really, come, I would say. If it is that far off, go back and adjust the other tables to get it closer. Um, the, the moral story is adjust everything else first before you really have to mess with this stuff. Um, that This stuff is, is the fine tuning portion and the, really where you make your money is on the base running airflow, your IAC steps, um, your RPM, and your spark. Uh, and of course, not, not forgetting the fuel 
it's probably the most important one um, actually of, um, of all all of them is this one is going to make the biggest difference with idle quality but that's pretty much it um, as far as that goes um, uh, one last thing we talked about a uh, spark adaptives um, so we have our idle, idle, idle um, adaptive spark control is where this is, is over speed so you see that it subtracts uh, 300 you know this is a proportional value pretty much so the more the error the more uh, the spark is pulled out so it's pretty much it so it's not not based on rate just straight up error again not like derivative uh, so this is actually fairly works very well um, so now this is the adder so when it gets under this much um, you know so say it goes under 200 off target it's going to add four degrees now if you if you want to increase this a little bit be careful how you do this um, because if you do increase it too much uh, too early say like if you put this value up to five and and you know put these to ten um, that might at twelve and a half it's going to set up for an over or undershoot all the time so you want to let it let it get a little bit out of you know off before it starts correcting that's why these numbers are set up this way so it's not to set up for an overshoot which can also be a thing so which will cause bucking and surging so you want to be careful with those um, but other than that um, it's pretty pretty much pretty much how I set things up um, it's pretty much everything has to do with idle um, tuning and I hope this video is helpful and uh, don't forget to like and subscribe if you liked it and uh, if you have questions post them down below or uh, hit me up on LS1 Tech and I'll see you out there